Kate. Yes, Slayer? You are amazing. I knew when we met that the man who won you would be beyond lucky. Um. Kate, that man just isn't me. I'm sorry? You're beautiful and smart. And I know that somewhere deep inside you is a woman capable of great love. But I don't bring that out in you, and I never will. Are you breaking up with me? Yes. Oh, thank God. What? I thought you were proposing. I know this may seem sudden, but it's something that's been lurking since, well, the beginning. I know being an attorney is an all-consuming job, but if you really wanted us to work, you'd make me a priority. True. And I'm not your priority. You're so not. Also, you're tired of dating someone who hasn't learned how to love. I never said that. Joe did. I'm college boyfriend. Sam called me his phantom girl. He was cute. Till it wasn't. And Larry told me I should go to love repair boot camp. Because of my childhood? <laughs> Who even knew those things were real? You've heard this before. Mm, yeah, lots. But you know, I'm not gonna pretend to feel something that I don't. I mean, you're so right, I just, I don't. Are you gonna eat that? Mm. <laughs> Henrietta Forsythe finally died. And good morning, Oliver. It was. Visions of my Bahamas vacation were dancing in my head till I got this news. Guess what I don't want to think about on my Bahamas vacation? Henrietta Forsyth. You're quick. I knew there was a reason I came to you first. I also never have Christmas plans. That too. It's a simple execution of her will, mostly. How many assets? Just the one big one. Come on. Holly Grove Inn. Nice, huh? Charming. Who gets it? No heirs. So to the trust, it goes, and they want it sold quickly before they get hit by taxes. Bye. End of the year. That's in three weeks. I know. Between you and me, Joyce just got a new gig in Toronto. That means the senior associate position here will be up for grabs. And while I can't make any guarantees, I can go to bed for you over Kirk. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Oliver. We both know it's totally selfish. You work harder than anyone here, and that makes my life easier. Okay. Well, I will have the business evaluations done right away. Review the books, hire a local appraiser. That's strangely not as easy as it seems. What? I've already hired two companies. Both failed. Oh, come on. I know. 45% of the population still believes in ghosts. And as of right now, so do 100% of our appraisers. So we'll hire someone else. Already have. Mr. Murray will be at the inn on the 12th. And so will you. You want me to hold his hand? Basically. You'll knock this out in no time. You always do.
Can I help you? Hi. Sorry. The door was open. It isn't, actually. I'm in the middle of closing the inn for the holidays. What, closing? Isn't it high season for a place like this? Why would you be closing now? Tradition. I'm Walter Rafferty. Oh. I take it you're Miss Jordan. Kate, with Patton and Turner, I'm here for the property appraisal. Yes. Mr. Murray arrived early, left early, too. What happened? Uh, it's probably the ghost. The ghost? Usually is when they leave like that. Though Daniel's never harmed anyone, every once in a while he does assert himself. Daniel. Mm hmm. You're on a first name basis with the ghost? No, when you've worked here as long as I have. Daniel Jacob Forsyth. He once owned this inn many years ago. Hmm. The inn is of the utmost importance to him. Now, I'm sorry your trip has been a waste of time. Oh, no, I'm not done. I just got here. There has to be some appraiser somewhere who's not gonna let a silly ghost story scare them off. Sorry, Daniel. And where will you stay until then? Uh, well, this is an inn, so I kind of figured that I would stay here. Impossible. Uh, as I said, we're closed until December 26th. The staff's already gone, and I'll be leaving within the hour. Mm. Well, as executor of the estate, I have a set of keys, so not impossible. Inadvisable. Because of the ghost? I don't scare easily. I'll be leaving soon. You will be alone. <laughs> I'm a big girl, Mr. Rafferty. Besides, it's only for one night, and I'll lock up the place when I leave. But you know what? You're welcome to stay here with me if that would make you feel better. Not remotely. I'll be gone, as I always am, by December 13th. Uh, why? December 13th? Tradition. Appraiser was a bust. You're kidding. Nope. He was sprinting to his car when I got here. So what's your plan now? Oh, when I get home to Boston, I'll hire one of the appraisers we've used before, so they're not caught up in the myth of this place. You staying there tonight? Have you seen anything spooky yet? Don't start. I almost wish I wasn't flying tonight so I could get the update. See if you survive. You'll get the update when you get back from the Bahamas. And I can guarantee you there won't be any ghosts. <laughs> Good night, Oliver.
You're trespassing. How's your head? Sore. Understandable. But you appear thankfully no worse off, which means you can leave. And you should, at once. I'm not leaving, you're the trespasser. A man cannot trespass on his own property. This inn belongs to the Forsyth Trust, which means you should leave before I call the sheriff. Thank you for coming, Sheriff. No problem. So he was here when you got up? Yes, um, but I think he got in last night because I saw someone before I got knocked out. He hit you? Oh, no, 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 uh, just a vase fell on my head. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll be better once he gets out of here, though. Okay, well, uh, why don't you stay down here and I'll, I'll take a look around. Okay, thanks. I swear. Well, he was probably some drifter who came in out of the cold and hightailed it out back when he saw me. I mean, I'll check around the area, though. Well, he was dressed awfully nice for a drifter. He wore a tie. Well, some do. You might want to, uh, use the alarm system. Well, I did. I said it last night. I think. <sighs> This is my inn. I have all the keys. I have no wish to harm you. I merely want my solitude, which requires your departure. It didn't go off, which means he was inside when you left. Well, I searched everywhere again. You must have missed something. How's your head? It's fine. Look, I'm not hallucinating. There was a man here. Well, he's not here now. Unless you missed him again. Or he's a ghost. <laughs>
Miss Jordan, would you like me to wait here until you leave? No, that won't be necessary. Look, I'm not making this up, Sheriff. A man was here. I made sure all the windows and doors are locked now. Just don't forget to set the alarm after me. I also know the alarm code. Are you going to keep disappearing and reappearing like this? Or are you going to keep calling the sheriff? I'm pretty sure he thinks it's all in your head. Is it? Are you? You tell me. It's your head. I think you're real. But what is real? Unfortunately, it isn't. You knew this would happen when I said I was staying here, didn't you? I know it might. Or you might leave. He wants me to leave. Maybe you should. <laughs> and what would I tell my boss? Strange things are afoot at Holly Grove Inn and I couldn't get it appraised? I have a promotion riding on this, you know. Holly Grove should not be sold. Okay, can we please dial down on the whole startling Kate thing you two have going on? I have a potential head injury and explain to me again how he's a ghost. He doesn't look like a ghost. See? You can't touch ghosts. So we're telling her then? It seems prudent. Except I wouldn't believe you for a second. And you're an expert on the supernatural? Mm -hmm. Just what I've seen in the movies. Oh, yes, cinema. Mm -hmm. Bit of advice, there's more to life and the afterlife than one can find in the realm of flickering lights and pipe organ music. Does he always talk like that? At the moment, Daniel is not a ghost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, when the clock strikes midnight on December 24th, he will be yet again. How does that even work? A curse. A curse? You just said a curse out loud and actually meant it. How else would you explain this? Right now, I'm leaning towards cerebral edema, but I am really hoping I'm wrong on that. Okay, okay, look, I'm not going to deny that there is a very, very strong resemblance between you and the dead guy in that picture out in the hall, but there has to be some other explanation besides curses and ghosts. There's just no such thing. I'll prove it to you. I think I'm leaving now. You really are nuts. He sure does eat a lot for a ghost. He says it's more about the sensation. All his senses are heightened upon his return. Yeah. Grilled cheese? I think if I came back from the dead, my first meal would not be a grilled cheese. I can hear you. Maybe a chicken vindaloo. Hey, did they have chicken vindaloo when you were... Alive? What, is he always this cranky when he comes back? I wouldn't know. Other than our first encounter many years ago, our interactions are rare and brief. Yeah. He doesn't seem chatty. I can still hear you. Uh. I'm no expert on curses, but this one seems weird. He's a ghost except for two weeks? Why, did he insult a witch? 
There are no witches. Oh, right, because that would be crazy. Daniel doesn't know the reason behind his situation. Only that he came back 95 years ago for 12 days and has done the same each year ever since. And he can't leave here. He's restricted by the inn's property line. Yeah, but there, there's too many rules for this to be random. There has to be purpose behind it. Agreed. But I don't have enough information, and Daniel isn't very forthcoming. <laughs> Why? Doesn't he want to find out? I mean, if it were me, I'd spend all of my free time back here researching until I found out why this was happening to me. And maybe then I could break the curse. Daniel, things are different now. Miss Jordan's presence proves that. The inn will be sold. And that will put you in a precarious position. If you're found out, you become a curiosity. Mm. And you'd never be alone again. Okay, so most obvious question first, how did you die? I don't know. How do you not know how you died? Was it pneumonia, gunshot, poison? I don't remember. His body was discovered in the woods right out there. Seemed like foul play, but nothing was ever proven. Homicide. Okay, so what were you doing as of your last memory? Returning home. From? Montreal. What were you doing in Canada? It wasn't honorable. I'm a lawyer. We don't do honor. <laughs> Are you familiar with the Volstead Act? Somewhat. It was a law passed the autumn before my death that banned alcohol in America. Prohibition. What Daniel is trying not to say is he was a bootlegger. I prefer the term rum runner. Wait, I thought you owned this inn. It became mine upon the death of my parents months after my return from the Great War. And Charles's. It was his, too. Who's Charles? My brother. Were it up to him, this place would have been sold on the heels of my parents' demise. But I kept it going with the help of my cousin Harry. Well, that's lovely, but I don't understand the uh, bootlegging. The rum running was a means to an end. And the end was, as it so often is, a woman. Between the economy and influenza, I'm surprised anyone is venturing out at all. I don't know how much longer I can keep it afloat. Look, if it's money you need, I know some people in Montreal. <laughs> Harry, you know I love you, but I'm familiar with your type of people. I'm not comfortable going down that route. No offense. <laughs> None taken, cousin. I'm not always too comfortable either. I just hope you don't have to lose the place after all these years. Who is this? Lily Culver. She and her widowed father recently moved here from Boston. Oh, thank you. But you better move fast, Danny boy. You're not the only one to have noticed her. Sorry, y'all. This, this room is off limits to the party. Harry will gladly escort you back for the holiday festivities. Aren't you quick on your feet? Only when there is a lady in distress. Otherwise, I'm a total blunderer. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. You seem quite capable and charming. I promise to do everything in my power to keep that impression from ever changing. <laughs> You're in as beautiful. More so with you here. Oh, my. You are the charmer. <laughs> My name is Lily. I know. Daniel. I know. Was she your sweetheart? Lily was... She was. Until she betrayed me with my brother, I remember quite well.
This is one of my favorites. Fantastical nonsense. Don't you believe in ghosts? I believe in what I know. What I can see. Touch. <laughs> when we marry, I'm going to turn this room into a library filled with all sorts of books, especially fantastical nonsense. <laughs> What if we lived somewhere else? Don't be silly. Will we ever live somewhere else? This inn is perfect. It's part of the reason I fell in love with you. What do you mean by that? It set you apart from all the others. When Father first took a look at you, he thought you were reckless. But when I told him you own this inn, his opinion of you changed. He said it showed you had responsibility, dedication, a good head on your shoulders. With that, I couldn't agree more. Tell me about Montreal. Persist. Rafferty's gone back to his place, but I think we could still get in some good work tonight. No, we're quite done. Daniel. For tonight. We're done for tonight. We will continue. No promise is a promise. So, where are you sleeping tonight? I don't sleep. <laughs> of course you don't. Look, just don't come in my room, okay? I would not. You already did. Well, I would not now. What does your husband say of you staying here? I'm not married. You're both. I don't have one of those either. And if you say one word about me being an old maid, it will not go well with you, all right? Times have changed since you were last out in the world. People don't fall in love? Some do. I haven't. Good night. Hello? You don't. I do. As your brother, I can protest your actions, particularly when they're illegal. What if something happened to you? Well, consider. If I'm arrested or if I die, you'll have your shot at Lily. Don't pretend, Charles. You follow her like a puppy. It's pathetic. At least I take her feelings into consideration, which is more than I could say for you. You told Charles about Montreal. He wanted to see the books. I had to explain where the money was coming from. You owe so... Charles no explanation. I'm the one you report to. Is that clear? Cousin is... Is that clear, Harry? It's clear. Let's just get back to work. Agreed. First breakfast. 
hungriest ghost ever. <laughs> I can see that. Maybe if you had. Hello. Uh, Kate Jordan. This is Molly O'Brien. Uh, no, actually, back to Molly Bell. Divorced. Oh, hi. Um, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm sorry about my um, friend. He's Char. weird. Oh, well, we're all a little weird. <laughs> Small town life, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I heard my brother came by a couple times. Yeah. Your brother? The, the sheriff? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, me, you know, he probably thinks that I'm a little weird. I'm sure he doesn't get calls like that from, from Walter. No, Walter here is pretty self-sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the water pipes in my pub, they, they burst. Oh, no. Oh. Mm, yeah, the place <sighs> is a total mess. If there is any chance you'd think about opening the tavern for the holidays, no. love. What he means is he needs more time to work out the specifics. Specifically, no. Hi, I'm Molly. What's your name? DJ. It is absolutely not DJ. A ridiculous name if I ever heard such a thing. <laughs> Sorry, could you just excuse us for a moment? Thank you. What is wrong with you? Do you want her to know who you really are? I want her to leave. Or do you not dangling the slim chance of being useful? I want you gone as well so I could have my solitude. Oh, yeah? Well, one way to guarantee never having your solitude again is let her find out who you are, so cool it, Deej. Hmm. This is shaping up to be the worst Christmas since I died. Don't stop being so dramatic and just follow my lead. DJ is a Forsyth cousin. Hello. He's stopped by to get a look at the inn after Henrietta's death. Oh. I only knew her when she was a child. <laughs> okay. Well, the inn has always been one of my favorite places around town. And, uh, frankly, I was kind of hoping the tavern would be open. I mean, my pub is going to be down for at least a week, and I would love to send folks here. Oh, I wish we could help out, but uh, the staff's on holiday. Well, I can bring my people. I, mean, I have a great bartender. <laughs> what? Well, I find that hard to believe. Well, have you ever even been to my pub? The only bartender that I trust is myself. Oh. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Prove it. No, no proving. He's not good at it. You're not good at it. Tonight, bring companions. By then, I will have secured the ingredients needed to establish my veracity. Hmm. I have no idea what you just said, but I will see you tonight. Shake. There you go. Okay, then. We'll uh, see you later. A challenge. <laughs> From a lady. <laughs> Even after death, there are firsts. What about your solitude? Well, your presence has negated much hope I have for that. Well, I may be deceased, I will not allow my honor to be questioned without retort. Hmm. It's a principle. This borrows in deplorable conditions. Where's the Ferna Branca? What are you doing? Making a shopping list. If you're gonna do this, you're gonna do it right. Oh, yes. Try this. Mm -hmm. Now that is a hanky panky. It is indeed. Thought to me by calling herself the summer I spent at the Savoy. <laughs> You're hilarious. Ah, so do you know the Singapore slang? That's similar to straight slang? Mm, let's find out. Uh, it's just taking longer. It's a property appraisal. You should have handled this by now, and it's not exactly like we had a lot of time to begin with. This whole ghost thing is causing more problems than I anticipated. You know, it was funny at first, but now it's tedious. Tell me about it. Are you at a party? No. Kind of. Get the property appraised and get back to Boston, Kate, quickly. 
I said, what are your intentions about my sister? She likes you. I mean, uh, don't worry. If you don't like her, then that's, that's fine. But just don't lead her on, OK? I haven't. And I do like her. So why don't you ask her out? I mean, you're both adults. You're both single. It's not that complicated. Hmm. You need a Christmas tree. Why? Because it's Christmas. There used to be a tree in the front room every year. I thought you'd never been here before. Rafferty mentioned it earlier. <laughs> I have always found this inn to be so romantic, you know? Mm. Ghosts and tragedies and scandalous marriages. People gossip about it even today. Scandalous marriages? Mm. Who's? Mm. Charles Forsyth and Lily. Right? They married only a month after her fiancé Daniel died. You've heard of Daniel Forsyth? A little bit. <laughs> well, nobody believed the marriage was real. Baby came too soon. Folks said it was Daniel's. There was a baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only lived a couple hours, though. And Lily, she passed days later in this inn. It is so sad. It's got him so bent out of shape. like that. Are you really that insensitive? We were getting good information. About my life. My life. Not some gossip to be chatted about over drinks. Oh, I know to you this must feel like some story from long ago to dredge up, but it's not. It's real. And I'm real. And it certainly doesn't feel like long ago to me. And to answer your question, which I'm sure is coming, no, I did not know about Lily's fate or the baby. Harry didn't tell you? He told me of their marriage, but I forbade him from telling me more. Precisely for this reason. Well, it sounds like it wasn't a real marriage. My brother's feelings for Lily were real. Yeah, but she loved you, though, right? I don't know. She was furious with me the last time I left. Charles told her about the rum running. How could you even consider this? The money will Means help me keep... Means nothing if you're in disgrace or jail or worse. Charles blows the dangers out of proportion. No, I am the one who doesn't want you to go through with this. I am. Lily. Promise me you won't go along with Harry's scheme. Promise me you'll be here with me for Christmas. You're making too much of this. Just promise me. I promise. to her. I was protecting her. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. That is unfair. You know what's unfair is lying to people. She probably hated you for it. I know I would. <sighs> Maybe she killed you. You cross a line, Miss Jordan. Yeah? Well, at least I'm not a jerk who lies to his pregnant fiance, gets himself killed, and then leaves her to die in a maybe loveless marriage. I want you to know tomorrow. This experiment is over.
Joseph. You didn't have to do that. Do what? Scare me like that. Like, I get it. You want me out of here. I didn't. I heard your scream and I came out once. It wasn't you? No. What about the opening and the slamming of the doors in my bedroom? No. The voices in the ballroom? Were not me, I swear. Come on, Kate. Let's go downstairs. I don't want to be in this house. There's a second ghost? I can't get you to move on. How am I supposed to get rid of a second one? Oh, it's extraordinary. What, you never noticed? Bumped into each other while haunting? I've had memories that seem real. Maybe they were. Maybe they were ghosts. I'd like to think I know the difference. <laughs> oh, God. As if this Christmas couldn't get any weirder. Look, I know I told you to leave. Yeah, you did. But I think you should stay. Really? Well, clearly, there's more to my mystery than I knew. Perhaps your uh, tenacity can be a fuse after all. A fir tree's atop your auto. Uh, yeah, it's a Christmas tree. I kind of figured you hadn't had one in a while, and, um... Look, I just, I wanted to apologize for what I said. Look, I, I crossed a line, and I'm sorry. Thank you. Shall we set up the tree? So, what's it like, you know, when you're not like you are now? Like a nightmare that goes on forever. I want to wake, but I can't. So for 12 days. Why 12 days? Why Christmas? I don't know. You know, I haven't had an actual Christmas in 95 years. It used to be my favorite time of the year. I'd almost forgotten. Christmas was my mom's favorite time of year, too. I always made a point of getting a tree as a reminder, even if it's just me. And it's always just me. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> oh, believe. Then the man of your time must be very foolish. forthcoming with you it's not them I mean I want to be in love you know like really in love but I don't think I know how <laughs> it's not a trait to be learned I'm not so sure about that my parents got divorced when I was young and long story short I think I'm sort of collateral damage I've only known you for a short while now, under unique circumstances. But I feel quite confident that you have a wonderful capacity for love. Well, thank you. And for that, you get to hang the angel on the tree. If we don't get this figured out, if my theory was wrong and nothing changes, I'll make sure you always have a tree for Christmas. No! <laughs> 
I insist. I don't care. We are talking about your safety here. I've slept alone in this room a few days now, and nothing scary or too scary has happened. Circumstances have changed. We now know of the other presence. I will be in this chair in this corner if anything untoward happens. You don't sleep. I will not hover over your bed if that's a concern. In fact, here. Your privacy is assured. Good night, Kate. The trust wants to sell the inn. Any chance you could buy? I don't make enough money for that. I wish I could. I wish you could too. How did you not sleep? Uneventfully. Two. There are two ghosts. Yeah, any idea who it could be? No. If anything scary ever happened, I always assumed, uh... Understandable. <laughs> okay, so let's review what we know and what we think we know. There were two ghosts, one unidentified, one making pancakes. There's a good chance the one making pancakes was murdered. I'm still hoping for a tragic fall. Oh, yeah, ever the optimist, but in case you're wrong, there were two suspects, Charles and Lily, although their motives are still unclear. You should also consider Conrad LaBelle. Who? The gangster in Montreal that Harry and I did rum runs for until I quit. He was a nasty fellow. You quit? I was in over my head. Fine, three people then. Now, where were you as of your last memory? In the forest, beyond the manor. And who was with you? I was alone. Hmm. What about Harry? I left him in Montreal with LaBelle's people so I could make it back to Lily by Christmas Eve. I almost succeeded. I even saw her. Lily? Yeah. In the doorway. Right before I... I was struck from behind. Hmm. I never remember that before. Unnerving. But who attended the dance? Why? Because whoever was there couldn't have hit you from behind. Then it couldn't have been Lily. 
Though who knows how angry she would have become had she found out why it was really a monster. <laughs> oh, please, don't kid yourself. She knew. Women always know stuff like that. She was probably cursing you the whole time. Wait, how long were you gone to Canada? A couple of weeks, maybe less. Two days less? Perhaps. We left on the 13th. And you came back late on the 24th. That's 12 days, Daniel. That's got to be significant. Yes, but how? I don't know. But there's something there. Now. Immediately. At once. Got it? But, Oliver... Vacation time's over, Kate. I'm not... Senator Morton died yesterday. It's all hands on deck, including mine, which means definitely yours. Get back to Boston today. Got it? Got it. Good. Hi. Hey. He's counting on you to return. I will. And we'll figure this out. That, Ms. Jordan, has been my hope since you first disregarded my warnings to leave. Sneaky. <laughs> it belonged to my father. His name's inscribed inside. It won't open, not since I returned. It might very well disappear as soon as you pass a property line, but I'd still like you to have it. Daniel. That, that way you won't forget me. Impossible. Nothing's impossible. I'm proof. I will be back before Christmas. I promise. So all that time, and you didn't accomplish the one thing that I asked. Well, I've been working with the ghost. Daniel is his name, to try to figure out why he hasn't crossed over to the other side in hopes that once he actually did, I could bring in the appraisers and we could sell the darn thing. Just say you were skiing. There's nice skiing there. I wasn't skiing. That's a shame. Live a little. But not until after you get the in appraised. I'll get it appraised. <sighs> the name Molly is appearing on your special device. It's a cell phone, and I'll call her back. The modern woman's forward nature when it comes to courtship leaves me both off put and deeply envious. It's friendship, not courtship. She's probably calling about the Christmas Eve dance. While I admit my prolonged isolation has left me rusty on the nuances of human interactions, she clearly likes you. And you clearly like her. Which makes your inaction all the more baffling. So what can I do? If I ask her out and we like each other, then what? Well, you were married once, I assume you know. Long term, with the situation with you? This is your life. Don't use me as an excuse not to live in. I could say the same about you. <laughs> what woman would want a man in my situation? Kate. At least that's the impression I get, don't you? Well, Kate is a remarkable woman. If my circumstances were different, I could imagine. But I wouldn't do that to her. It would be unfair. Plus, we don't even know if she'll return. <laughs> she'll return.
Mr. Murray, I don't recall making another appointment. That's because I did, on your special device. Mr. Murray, thank you for agreeing to stop by. Let's start in the basement. Please come in. Kate, the appraiser just sent word. He's completed the walkthrough of the Holly Grove Inn. Good job. Mm -hmm. Which means there's a little over a week to sell the place. You'll need to work on this exclusively, 24-7. What about Christmas? What about it? I was planning on going back to the inn. Your work there is done. But... The trust is counting on us, and I am counting on you. And you need to be here for the Christmas Eve party. I'll be announcing your promotion. You deserve it. Priorities, Kate! That's new. Came back. Priorities. So, any more ghost sightings? Only when I look in a mirror. <laughs> well, that's good news. So, you got the inn appraised? I did. Why? what you wanted. You know, um, I found out something while I was gone. Something I think you should know. Daniel Jacob Forsyth. They named him after me. Look at the father's name. Yep, 
as promised. Well, I'd say just in time. The caterers will be here by four. Oh, great. We should be all done decorating the ballroom by then. Come on, Walter. <laughs> What's going on in the ballroom? Uh. How many poinsettias did you bring? Three. Oh, good. Because it could use some over there on the floor by the by the tree. Some bright red. The Christmas Eve dance here. Well, Molly's pub was too damaged to host this year. Well, that's nice. There we go. I was just thinking if we had more lights. And it's right that it should be here too, again. I've red. missed it. I've missed so many things. something. I don't have a gift for you. Just open it. Here's a woman you were not courting is being courted by others. Thanks for the update. Walter, you're the one to tell me that things are different now. One way or another, you and I would both have to move on. Well, right here, in this moment, it's time to try. <sighs> Screw tradition. Excuse me, Luke. You will step in. Thank you, Molly. May I? What took you so long? It's 
nearly midnight. I told you, Lily, a leopard cannot change its spots. Men are not leopards, Charles. He promised me he'd be here by Christmas Eve. A promise is only as good as the character of the man who makes it. I believe in him. Do you hear that song, Lily? Twelve days. That's how long he's been with Harry breaking the law. That's how long he's lied to you. That's how long he's put himself before you, before everyone, as he always does. Twelve days is long enough for a man to have learned his lesson and repent his mistakes. But he is not here. He has not learned. He will never learn. He will learn. I know it. You ask for a miracle. And a miracle will be. It's Christmas, Charles. A better time for a miracle. sent someone else. Someone who would have known my route. Because it was his route too. to kill me. But he was your cousin. Why would he... I had no choice. You shouldn't have quit, Danny. They were afraid you'd tell. I wouldn't have. I know. But LaBelle, he didn't believe me. He told me I had to stop you or else he would. And then he'd go after my family. Henrietta, I couldn't risk it. She had just been born. She was my everything. I had to protect her. Why is this happening? Why haven't you moved on? Where else would I go? I murdered someone. He's afraid of judgment. And as long as you stay here, I stay. You're my anchor. You're the one who chases people away, makes sure he's alone. You killed him and cursed him to this purgatory. No, no, that's not true. I don't know why you're stuck here, Danny. I swear it. No. I know. He's not why I'm here. Turns out it's not a curse after all. It's a miracle. Lily's miracle. For me. 
If fear is what's keeping you here, Harry, then I forgive you. What? I've been angry for a long time. It did me no good. And who's to say it wouldn't be exactly where you are right now, had I not been given a chance to learn? I don't have a right to judge anyone, even you. And what I did, I kept you here. I kept me here. This is my doing. Turned out to be a blessing. It just took me a long time to realize that. I'm... I'm sorry. I know. Don't be afraid. Have faith. No, I really thought that if we found out what happened, that you'd move on, but you're still here. It was as good a theory as any. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm not sorry we failed. The truth is, it would have broken my heart if you were gone. I've waited for this for a long time, and I don't want you to move on. I want you here with me. I only have 12 days to offer. Well, it's better than none. And I've had plenty of none. Okay. I don't think Well, Daniel, what if this is our fate? And sure, it's not conventional at all, but I mean, come on, are we supposed to just pretend like we don't feel this? Please tell me you feel this. You deserve more. But what I want is you. It's almost midnight. And then I'll wait for you. Same time next year. And the year after. And the year after that. for you to love once again presents itself, you will be ready. And it will, Kate. I promise you, it will. You're free. Free from this place. choice is yours to make.
Well, hello, Oliver. Cruz. We aren't fighting. That's an advantage of not working together. I think I was a little hasty with the whole priorities gauntlet. You think? Okay. I know. The truth is, Kate, I never thought you'd pick anything over this job. Ever. But the more I think about it, the more I realize that you're right. It's Christmas. You should get a vacation. Sounds lovely. Now, what do you really want? The trust deed for the inn. I don't know where it is, and I gotta get my hands on it ASAP. Why? There's a buyer in play, just came out of the blue, though. If you think about it, it makes sense. Who? We bought the inn. With a partner. If all goes well. Molly. <laughs> she loves the place as much as I do. My real goal was and is for Daniel to be free. Who knows? Maybe he is. Walter, the cleaning crew just arrived. They need to talk to you. Be right there, Molly. you. Yeah. 